Hi, I'm Bruce Williams. This is Chamber Chats. I'm the CEO of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. I would like to begin by acknowledging that I live and work in the ancestral territories of the Lekwungen-speaking Coast Na- Salish nations, the Songhees and the Esquimalt. This program is made possible through the support of Island Savings, a division of First West Credit Union, and we're usually in the studios of Czech Television, but because of what's going on with Omicron, we are all, and by we, I mean the three of us, are in separate locations today. And by separate locations, I mean the Comox Valley and Nanaimo, and I'm in Victoria. You know, we're all Canadians, we're all BCers, we are all Islanders, but even within the communities in which we live, there are differences, there are distinctions among them all. And one of the great ways to define the distinctions between our communities is the role of the Chambers of Commerce. We want to talk about that with a couple of folks to kind of get the pulse of what's going on on Vancouver Island over the last two years. Diane Hawkins is with me. She is the CEO of the Comox Valley Chamber of Commerce, and Kim Smythe is the CEO of the Greater Nanaimo Chamber of Commerce. Thank you to both of you for being here today. Diane, when somebody says to you, what's going on in the Comox Valley these days, what do you say to them? Well, a lot of things. (laughs) (laughs) We're all, (laughs) a lot of things are going on. Uh, there's a lot of collaboration happening within our region. Um, you know, there's a, it's a time where we've all needed to pull together, and, and our community's done a really good job of that. It's been an exceptional time to see that happen, right? It's kind of we're going to talk about priorities in a second. But Kim, in general, tell me about Nanaimo and what's going on in the Mid Island. Uh, Mid Island's very busy. Um, you know, as the sort of hub for Malahat North of the island, uh, we're you know, a transportation center, we're a government services center, we're a retail center. So we service a lot of the North Island uh, and Mid Island, of course. So we've been staying very busy and we've got some positive business signs showing themselves here too. So Diane, throughout this whole process, uh, you've heard from your members and you've heard from business owners and others talking about what are their priorities for recovery, for resilience, all of that sort of thing. So what are some Comox Valley specific priorities that have come along? Well, there's a lot of things that, you know, people are, people are talking about and, you know, some of it's recruitment. There's a lot of challenges uh, in our community with recruitment, um, in, you know, in increasing salaries, salaries are increasing, uh, housing and childcare are, you know, challenges for us as well. And, and there's organizations that we're working with to, to look at those situations and again, collaborate uh, to see what we can do to uh, take some pressure off um, the people that are being affected by this, you know, and then you add staff illnesses and shortages and, uh, you know, the new law, the new um, health laws around being off sick. And that, again, adds a burden to to local business, to business in general. Yeah, for sure. There's common things, Kim, right between Comox and here in Victoria and Prince George and Charlottetown. But let's talk specifically again about the hub in the mid island of Nanaimo. What are the what are the priorities that have come along and been most prevalent for you and your members? Uh, workforce issues, definitely. We've seen this through COVID and we've, we've certainly witnessed it in the return from COVID and how that impacts the service industry, hospitality especially. Uh, that's significant. Supply chain issues and transportation, uh, transportation onto the island, transportation around the island. We saw at Christmas with the, uh, with the weather events that happened, um, the Nimo was a little bit cut off. We couldn't get south to Victoria. Uh, with the Malahat down for a few days and we couldn't get north. We could if we had a lot of patience and plenty of gas in the tank because it was taking some three hours to get to Parksville and back or to get just to get to Parksville or from Parksville to Nanaimo. Right. Uh, but transportation onto the island, we took a hit last week with BC Ferries announcing uh, curtailment of sailings out of uh, Horseshoe Bay to Departure Bay. They cut back about 20% of the sailings, which is, has a significant impact on how we do business uh, because it's very difficult to return to um, from Vancouver at the end of the day. Um, that is uh, that has a major effect on us and, and kind of gives us a wake up call. We also had the scare of a, a possible strike uh, at C-SPAN, which would have uh, cut back their ability or their capacity to deliver foods, goods, uh, necessities, essentials from the lower mainland uh, to the island. Uh, they were going to be cut back to 30 percent of capacity. That would have created some significant shortages on the grocery store shelves within three or four days because that's about all we can take care of ourselves for here. Those are certainly huge considerations. 
a 25% increase in the price of a home, uh, median price of a home in the Mid-Island uh, has huge impacts. A uh, member of our chamber called me last week to say that they were losing two key staff who have to move to the prairies in order to be able to afford a home. So, yeah. you know, that impacts workforce as well as the pandemic and all of those uh, things that have happened. Um, so, it's challenges. Diane, we in the Chamber of Business are always advocating uh, for policy and decisions with government. And at the same time, we hear back from our members who are saying, well, we want you to tell them this. We want you to tell them that. We don't understand this. Can you help us understand that? Are there consistent messages you've been hearing all the way through, though, uh, pandemic related or not, which I guess everything is now? But what, tell me about the things that you hear most from your members. Uh, and some of it's more supports to help continue you know, in the upward climb uh, from from the results of the pandemic, there's still resources that that need to be available to to businesses as a whole. Um, you know that people love the Comox Valley because it's also open doors for us in terms of working from home and the geographic location and all the things that you can do. You know, we like to brag that you can ski and golf on the same day and work from home. Yeah, really. <laughs> so, I mean, there's. The, as much as the pandemic's been very difficult, and I certainly don't want to downplay that at all because it has been really hard on all of us collectively as a country, you know, as a world. Um, but there are some things that have presented themselves and, and we've seen people, you know, run with that and find other ways to, to do business and, and turn, turn it into a valuable service. And the Comox Valley is a beautiful place to live, whether you see or golf or not. For sure. Kim, consistency in the message from your members. Uh, you know, we talk about dealing with government and with each other, but what sort of things have you heard all the way through from day one? Uh, the challenges in workforce and keeping keeping doors open and businesses operating efficiently. But certainly what we're hearing a lot of now is, um, you know, that government regulations, government taxation, uh, changing that world has, is really uh does have a place in fueling inflation. Um, it costs more to employ people now that we have uh, paid sick leave mandatory. Uh, we did have uh, increases in um, minimum wage. Uh, we are paying a health tax now that we weren't paying three, two and a half, three years ago. So employers uh, are taking on these expenses. And obviously, um, you know, it's got to come out someplace and it comes out in increased price that you pay uh, for everything from meals in restaurants to groceries off the shelves. And uh, uh, businesses are, are hard pressed to do that because they don't want to be part of that inflationary spiral, yeah. uh, but they're forced to. Yeah, we're talking about island specific things today. One of the things that's happened in the last couple of months is that my colleagues here and others have created something that we're calling the Chamber Policy Alliance for the island or the Island Chamber Policy Alliance, to talk about things that specifically relate to Vancouver Island, which we came to realize really impacted the supply chain because of what happened with the atmospheric river and the Coquihalla went down. So the supply thing, I want to talk about that next. Our guests today on Chamber Chats are my colleague, Diane Hawkins, who is the CEO of the Comox Valley Chamber of Commerce, and Kim Smythe is the CEO of the Greater Nanaimo Chamber of Commerce. So Diane, along came the storm. In November, Coquihalla, done. We're seeing a lineup of, of container ships and supply ships up and down the coast because they can't move through the port of Vancouver the way they used to in the past. Supply chain has suddenly become an even bigger issue for us. And you mentioned a little bit about that earlier. What are you hearing specifically from your members about that? Well, the construction industry has certainly been hit. Oh, yeah. Um, as well as, well, I, I, grocery stores. I mean, go to the grocery store and one day there's lettuce and the next day there's no lettuce, you know, then there's turkeys and then there's no turkeys. So, you know, see, and, and not to make light of it, 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 it's, it is impacting us and it is affecting us. And, and when uh, appliance companies can't supply appliances to homes and so building, building permits are on hold, well, not burning building permits necessarily, but the actual completion of building projects are on hold. And and everybody um, is suffers in that regard, you know. Kim, what about you in supply chain and specifics? Uh, what she said, basically. Because <laughs> we're all <laughs> seeing know, that, right? It's the same thing. Yeah. 
construction industry has been heavily hit. Uh, we met with a couple of members on Monday. We're talking about uh, when things go down, they go down all across the board. So if you can't get windows at one job site or with one uh, building company, you're not getting windows for anything. And we're building a new Marriott hotel here in town right now. So when they say you can't get windows, that's uh, 160 rooms that don't get windows right now, uh, holding up a, a major multi-million dollar uh, investment project in downtown Nanaimo. Uh, it's happening across the board. And then there's the other part of it, which says, gee, do you really want to do that renovation? Because plywood's gone from 50 bucks a sheet to 250 bucks a sheet. Mm -hmm. Only if you want to stay in the game pretty bad and really need to do that job that you're going to shell out the extra bucks for it. Um, mm -hmm. th those are our difficulties that are showing their face. We have a lot of government offices here in town. Right now, there's a lot of illness going around, a lot of workplace absenteeism, which just slows everything down. If you're looking to have some process taken care of or some application or permit uh, done by city hall or uh, uh, provincial government offices, you're going to be waiting three to four times as long as you would have uh, prior to Christmas, let's say. So slow everything slows down uh, government restrictions and government requirements go up and uh, we all seem to be mo moving at half speed right now yeah i did some direct outreach to our building and development members and said what's all this doing to you and they said well it's taking longer it's going to cost more money it's going to take longer we're just saying to our clients i'm sorry there's nothing we can do about this but we are it's the three of us and others have said we are in this together and we're going to come out and through this together too but what does economic ongoing economic recovery look like, Diane, to you, specific to Comox? Well, there's so many things. Um, I think that, you know, we're all in here for the long haul mm -hmm. and it's going to take some more collaboration, working with local government, working with local organizations. I think having the um, Royal Canadian Air Force based here in the Comox Valley is a huge plus for all of yeah. us. You know, they've been, a, and 19 Wings been identified as a center of excellence for search and rescue. We now have a search and rescue training center. Um, so with that, there's a new squadron, you know, stand up squadron 418 that's been developed. So that provides additional service to members and it brings families to the Comox Valley as well. So the, there's a high demand for housing on the base and, uh, but the economic development benefits are huge for the Comox Valley and as far as what the what the base offers us. And as they start to construct, you know, housing units and you know build build their roads and grounds up, that'll also help impact our, our valley. And Mount Washington is doing really well. You know, and some of our hotels have done really well during, you know, during the pandemic. And I mean, part of it, I think, is that in 2020, the island was very attractive to people because our because our rates were very low. You know, our um, our COVID numbers were very low. So I, you know, I see local businesses, and I've seen a lot of them pivoting to not not only having like local shopping available, but also an incredible um, online access to to um, some of their products. There's some stores downtown Courtney that are doing an excellent job of providing that to, to customers. So there's a lot of resilience in, uh, in the uh, entrepreneurial world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you talk about CFB Comox, we have the same here because we have CFB Esquimalt. I wrote down some numbers for them. There's currently a $1.6 billion infrastructure upgrade program underway at the base. They do six hundred and eleven, yeah, six hundred and eleven million dollars a year in spending, and a four hundred and forty million dollar a year uh, payroll for six hundred sixty five hundred employees. So that's kind of an ongoing, sustainable, uh, solid piece of our economy that, that you have too, Diane. We have Uvic, Camos, and Royal Roads here, and uh, in Nanaimo, Kim, you've got the sort of the steady work of places like Harmac, and you've got Vancouver Island University. So there are some stable pillars there to keep the economy moving, right? Mm -hmm. uh, most definitely. Vancouver Island University has high impact in this community, uh, major economic influence in our community, uh, you know, large employment numbers. Um, the other part of our economy, which is very strong, and very consistent and will grow into the future as the population ages, is our health sciences campus at uh, mm -hmm. NRGH, which is expanding its services in the next few years, we're getting a cancer agency here as well to complement the hospital. So those are, again, those are all important, high paying professional employment opportunities. Uh, 
On the other end of the spectrum, though, what we're seeing is a, a large amount of growth in small business, independent business, home-based business. During the pandemic in the first year, we had 300 new home-based businesses open. I don't know what the number was for 2021, but halfway at the halfway mark, uh, city licensing phoned me and said, what's going on here? We had 300 new home-based businesses start up last year in Nanaimo. So far in 2021 to the halfway mark, we have 400 new home-based businesses. Wow. So they were questioning what I thought was behind that. I said, to me, it's very clear that a lot of people were furloughed, given time off, sent to work at home, took some extra time and looked around and said, hey, you know that widget project that we worked on five years ago? Maybe it's time to bring it back. Yeah. So husband and wife started a home-based business in the garage making their widgets. Before long, they hire a couple of employees and, you know, it's gangbusters and it's a going concern. We'll see what the stick with itness is like yeah. in this, but it's um, to see new businesses coming out of, um, uh, you know, incredibly horrible experience. Um, there's an upside. Yep. Uh, the work from home thing is going to be a whole other chamber chat altogether. However, when we talk about what the differences and the similarities are north of the Malahat and south of the Malahat, north of the Malahat has a very very distinct, different element to their economy that we do not have south of the Malahat. We're going to talk about that next. Our chamber chat today is with a couple of my cohorts. The CEO of the uh, Comox Valley Chamber of Commerce is Diane Hawkins, and Kim Smythe is the CEO of the Nanaimo Chamber of Commerce. So Diane and Kim, what you guys have that we don't have in the South Island is fishing, logging, things related to, to lumber, uh, we don't have any of that down here. Years ago, there were sawmills galore in the South Island. We don't have any of that stuff now. So, Diane, how much of a pillar is that sort of stuff in your community, and how much of a driver is that? Um, well, it, I mean, it, I, I imagine it'll always be a pillar, but I wouldn't say, I mean, while these things still exist in the Comox Valley, I wouldn't necessarily say at this point that they're a driver. I, I okay. believe that tourism is a, is a driver. Lifestyle is a driver. Uh, North Island College, uh, you know, which I didn't mention yeah. earlier, but North Island College is a huge driver. Uh, we were able to sponsor a couple of their programs this year, one being a digital program for students. The other was craft brewing. You know, we've got an yeah. incredible, um, you know, you can the places that you can eat in the Comox Valley are phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so we're really fortunate. There's a lot of creative people in here. And, and so I think that's what you're going to see emerge more and more is, you know, the local the, the local food, the, the local um, creations, and you're going to see that more and more in the Valley as opposed to, you know, yes, we were typically, when I grew up here, typically a forest and mining, you know, and fishing area. Yeah. You guys also have agriculture, which we need to ramp up in the South Island for sure. Uh, Kim, Mid-Island, again, the Nanaimo is, for a long time, was a mill town. Uh, that mill has since come back to life again, the Harmac Mill, but that whole fishing, logging, lumber-related stuff is a little different there than it is down here. It is, but uh, only by virtue of the fact that we're more involved in multimodal transportation, in processing, in technology, uh, than we are in the actual harvesting of these goods. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the fishing fleet no longer stays here. Uh, it's moved south uh, where it parks because our, our, our harbor, our boat basin, has uh, mostly been taken over by recreational uh, vessels. Um, so we see a lot of it around us, but we, we we don't recognize it like we used to. I was doing some work with the Discovery Islands fish farms and uh, had to look pretty hard to see where was the economic impact of, uh, of Discovery Island fish farms in Nanaimo. And it was simply that processing. Uh, St. Jean's and their associated canneries, Hub City Fisheries, uh, big business down there. Um, but they're not, they're certainly not bringing their netfuls on shore here any longer. No. And we have lost most of the mills that operated. Harmac is a very technological savvy, um, um, uh, high end finisher of uh, specialty goods, uh, specialty paper products uh, that are shipped internationally. Yeah, they made masks at one time too, didn't they? At the beginning of the, of the pandemic. Yeah, they make the material that makes masks. So, yeah. you know, they, they process the pulp that creates the, the raw material and product, and then that gets shipped off uh, to U.S. or Asia, uh, where they make the masks and sell them back to us. We're just about out of time here, guys, but I want to go back to something I said at the very top. The three of us and many others across the island 
are involved in what we're calling the, uh, the Island Chamber Policy Alliance. We're working together to talk about things that are specific to Vancouver Island and our chambers. Diane Hawkins, what's the value in us doing all that? Having a collective voice at the table. When we get to BC Chamber policy, policy sessions, we've already got our chambers in line with the speaking from the same song sheet or singing from the same song sheet. Yeah, because we are a separate economy from the rest of, the, of, yep. of British Columbia. If you, our dependency on ferries and barges is different than everybody else. But Kim, the, the value in us having this alliance and working together with Port Hardy, Tofino, Port Alberni, Cowichan, uh, Campbell River, everybody all together. I, there's great value in that. A fantastic value, Bruce. And, and you know, just thinking back to your last question about uh, forestry fishing, the resource industries and how, how Nanaimo is involved in that. Well, we're involved in that by supporting all of those communities. Where is the vital industry? Port Hardy, um, Port McNeil, Zabalos, uh, all those North Island communities that are so important to our economy. Um, and we have this unique set of issues. We're unique to Canada. I was trying to explain this to uh, uh, to a call uh, from the Canadian Chamber of Commerce in Ottawa the other day that uh, Vancouver Island is totally unique in Canada. We don't have any bounding chambers of commerce to us. Uh -huh. we're, we're unto ourselves here. And things that matter here are more significant to our individual lifestyles, our quality of life and the success of our businesses than they might be in the interior of British Columbia or the Northwest or Northeast. Um, so this alliance is going to speak with a voice that's unique and that will uh, attract regional attention and attract hopefully regional support. When we draft policy, it's going to be policy that impacts every one of us, how we do business and how we live. Thank you yeah. both for your time today and all the advocacy work that you do on behalf of both your own chambers and members, but all of us collectively as a group. Diane Hawkins is the CEO of the Comox Valley Chamber of Commerce, and Kim Smythe is the CEO of the Greater Nanaimo Chamber of Commerce. Thank you both. Thank you for tuning in. You, you bet. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you again for another Chamber Chat. <laughs>